What's going on, you guys? Hey, Arrow. Hello. 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 I love that picture. Is that you there on the picture? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's that's a cool. That's stick. awesome. Very cool. That's very funny. Yeah. First thing I was wondering when I saw your name there because it sounds like Arrow, obviously, and then I picked it because that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. It just gives us the opportunity to, uh, you know, when, when you understand what acoustic is, it's like, it, it, to me, it's like a dream catcher. A lot of people think that dream catchers that Native Americans uh, have created are to help filter dreams when that's not true at all. That was their paper. That's how they used to, you know, communicate was through, uh, through these dream catchers. Oh, mm. didn't know that. Fabulous. And they would leave it behind for other travelers and then they, they would pick it up and know what was what was in that territory. Wow. That's amazing. I had no idea. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you guys surprised your fans in a huge way with this EP. Really? <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, it was kind of out of the blue. Um, we were uh, working on our uh, 20th anniversary album, Double X. It comes out in um, February. And we were thinking to ourselves, you know, we have this Christmas tour that we've been doing um, for the past few years running. <clears throat> and we thought, well, while we're at it, while we're in the studio, why don't we get a few more nice. Christmas tracks that we can supplement, you know, we can put them out for people to stream for the holiday season, but we can also add them in to the tour because our tour, you know, our first Christmas album was only 10 songs worth of music. And so we would have to supplement 90 minutes worth of show with uh, a lot of other stuff from our legacy albums. And we thought, you know, if we had four more songs, we could really make this like feel more like a Christmas show. Yeah. So we tacked that on uh, to the 10 songs for the uh, 20th anniversary album, Double X. And uh, yeah, we decided to drop it um, and kind of surprise everybody. And they are the perfect Christmas songs. I mean, have yourself a merry little Christmas. This is the song I want to hear for the rest of my life every Christmas morning. The very second I step <sighs> into that living room, this is the song I want to hear. That's how great you guys did with this. Oh, thank, wow. you. thank you. So That's awesome. a huge compliment. Wow. Thank you. All the Spotify plays will be coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes three cents. Yeah. Most Christmas music is recorded in the summer months. Did you guys do, deal with that as well? Oh, yeah. Summer months in Miami, of all places. Uh, it was it was very hot. Not only was it really hot outside, but the studio we were in was this tiny little studio. And, you know, with all of the recording equipment, just blowing hot air. Um, it was a very sweaty, sweaty Christmas <laughs> for us. A very sweaty Christmas. Yeah, have people. yourself a very sweaty Christmas. <laughs> when, when you go into the studio, are you all four in there at the same time? Or do you go in and lay down tracks? A little bit of both. Well, in, this, in this case, actually, Worst was in uh, Barcelona. He, That's right. Yeah, he stayed home, and we were going to try to see how that works, and we recorded him from um, a distance, basically. The three of us, um, Stephen, David, and I, Sebastian, we were in Miami, and that was really very interesting like literally always went into the studio ladies vocal in the day that was done thank you nice <laughs> uh, and us um we actually we did we go one at a time we did a, a little bit of a mixture like if we were doing like a solo you know our solos sometimes you know we would go in for each other and kind of give each other some pointers or give you you know uh, be a second ear for each other to kind of um get the best take possible or think like you know especially for me because this was my first recording with the guys and i kind of wanted to know oh you know okay when you're singing this we're gonna have harmonies over you so it kind of needs to be sung in a way where uh, just with the awareness that other people will be singing with you at this point. So, um, so yeah, so I had some guidance from that and then, uh, and then, you know, other times I was, I was just by myself and then we went in and did the harmonies together yeah. and kind of laid those out. We didn't plan them ahead of time. We just kind of went in and thought what's going to be the best part, uh, harmony for this person in this moment. And we did that until the song was built, you know, it's, we did it all from scratch. So it was, um, it was quite the experience, like, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of taking it from nothing and then being like, Oh, we have a song. When I, because I've done morning radio and we've had so many people inside the studio at a time, when you talk about collaborating, the, c communication isn't always speaking. There's body language involved. Do you guys practice that as well? It could be eye movement. It could be just the nod of the head. But, I mean, but there's, there's a way that you communicate when you're collaborating. 
You know, that's a very funny thing because uh, for Stephen, that's different. But the three of us, obviously, and at the time, we've been together for 20 years. And, you know, we spend so much time together when you're touring like that. I mean, we spent more time, the four of us, together than with any other person wow. in the whole world. So <laughs> body language, eye uh, contact, don't even mention it. I mean, we know each other <laughs> so well and we have so much stuff. Sometimes, sometimes it's even difficult, you know, because on stage even you might be telling something and the three of us we know exactly what we're talking about and nobody else <laughs> you know so you almost lose yourself sometimes in that in that in that uh in that connection you have and you're not aware that nobody else out there has yeah. that it's it's it leads to funny moments sometimes i will say though that you guys are really easy to read Oh, that's <laughs> well, it's almost like a moment of we've lived this life before because it seems like it's like, wow, I th this fell together really easy. That's that's the illusion we would like to present. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> yes. I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people are just unaware of. And, you know, they really don't need to be aware of any of that. I think in this uh, day and age of social hyper oversharing every single sneeze and everybody wants to be inside everybody else's lives there's no mystery in that you know we want to keep the mystery we keep it behind closed doors we do the work we do the homework and we we present to the people the the polished finished product that is so interesting you say that because isn't that why Led Zeppelin became so so big is because of the mystery we don't need to know what they're doing just listen and enjoy the music yeah I think, I think so. the music always speaks for itself somehow anyways. Yeah, yeah. So the song I'll be home for Christmas, that Latin appeal to it. Oh my god. That that, that is that is owning that song for you guys. <laughs> what do you like about the song particularly? I'm, I'm I, very curious about I it. I think what I love about it is that it fit into my atmosphere. In other words, I'm, I'm always creating something, and I need it, and, and I, I always just call it head music, and it really went into my mind, and I was able to just write and to be creative in that moment. There was nothing that interfered with my process of now, and I know that's heavy talking, but it's like, but it really allowed... And we were all sitting there, and, um, you know, Seb was like, Seb co-produced a few of these pieces and a few of these tracks. And he says, um, you know, I have this idea for this song and we should do like this bus and over Latin feel. And, and, you know, the three of us were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then he was like, trust me, trust me. So then uh, he, he presented it to us and we're like, yeah, this is super cool. Wow. Now, I realize that you were putting these these four songs together for the live performance that you've been doing for a while. But don't you also have that vision or that dream of what happens when we turn on the radio and there's one of our songs? Because that to me is like the one of the exciting parts about being a musician. Oh, I would love that. And I think our Christmas, I mean, our Christmas album is a very funny thing because we kind of recorded the first one very, very quickly. In just over a week, we recorded these 10 songs. And uh, we were very, very proud of it. It's a, it's a very, very beautiful album already, the first one. And then that's kind of why we've got su such good memories of recording that album and that music that we also were really excited about recording a few new Christmas songs. And I think, yeah, especially now with this, uh, because the repertoire we've got on this EP now is much more the American Christmas song, right? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, have yourself a merry little Christmas and that stuff. And yeah, I totally expect to hear that in some mall or in some elevator. I don't know why not. I think they're beautiful. <laughs> You know, I think the handicap we had sometimes is that LD was a little bit too intense, you know, <laughs> with our uh, small, small beginnings and our big, big endings. You know, it gets very dramatic often. And I think when you've got background music, you just want to like uh, dripple along a little bit at the same pace oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice word so but uh, yeah I think I I think yeah this music should be out there definitely Yeah, you talk about the Americanized versions of the songs when you travel from country to country during the holiday season do you have to change that set list because I mean I, I, I for for the first time I'm thinking oh my god if they, if they go to let's say Holland it, it could be completely different Christmas music that's true we have yet to really go with the Christmas tour um, outside of the UK and the US. Yeah. We have done in Spain. We did. Uh, we were going to. Yeah. Do we? But no. it it is. I mean, it is true what you're saying. You know. Uh, but then again, we're El Divo and we sing the El Divo repertoire. Yeah. 
you know and it's a very funny thing because we always get asked in every country and that's kind of a blessing of a curse and a curse of a worldwide career in every country they expect you to perform with a local artist or sing a local song in a local language and we accommodate as much as we can but still we represent El Devo so we sing the El Devo Christmas repertoire you know but did did Led Zeppelin ever do that when they went down to Peru did they do a, a Peruvian yeah. so. <laughs> the mystery we'll keep the mystery they did stare away to Machu Picchu <laughs> we, we did last year yeah <laughs> I wish I could have been a fly on the wall when you guys were putting the intro together for It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas. I love the way that you allowed the song to establish itself and then the vocals began. Was was there a lot of thought put into that intro? You said you co-produced that one. Yeah. There was a lot, yeah. Um, we, you know, the, the idea was just to surprise people and uh, something that was unexpected and all of a sudden you pick up on having some uh, rhythmic to it. Um I thought it was really important to serve the voice, even though know, the guys have such an incredible voice, and giving the time for an audience and making space in the music so that the voices are being heard is, in my opinion, really important. A lot of things are so overproduced, and you can put a lot of arrangements, and then you lose the voice. Um, in this case, I feel, and I'm hopeful, that people can appreciate everyone's voice in the band and, and really hear them. Yeah, I wish listeners could, you know, listen beyond sound is, is what I call it. And I think that in listening to all of these songs, I'm able to sit there and I can pick up on the background harmonies and, and then sing with those harmonies. And, and hope, hopefully as a listener, then, you know, it's like, oh, God, this is like watching them in concert. I can, I can come and perform <laughs> with them because I'm listening to everything that's being sung and the way that it's being performed. Nice. That's wonderful. I always wonder, uh, I mean, I don't think it's a necessity, you know, for the general consumer, but I mean, for me as a professional, I'm always listening to music like that. I listen to every single instrument and every single voice and every single note I hear. And I always wonder if that uh, (laughs) enriches the experience or takes away from it because I'm so intellectualizing everything. But I mean, people should just be able to put a song on and enjoy whether they know what's going on or not, you know. Did you learn how to do that listening beyond sound while listening to 45s as a kid? Because as, as you know, part of a garage band, that's how we learned the songs. We would slow down the 45, listen to the drums, or we would listen to the bass beat only because we would take that 45 back and forth, back and forth until we got it right. <laughs> You know what? I love electric guitar. I always loved that. The big guitar is from the 80s. And a way, obviously, to try to figure out the solos they play was doing exactly that. So we did that, yeah. Wow. Steven has absolutely no idea what you just said. 45? <laughs> 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 that's the CD is. 45, that's in 10 years for you. Oh, yes. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. And isn't you know, that... You could slow down things and you go like dang 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 it's a machine <laughs> it's a record oh it's a record, a record. record. Heard of those, i've right? seen that emoji yeah, yeah on yeah, the phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it odd how people are finding your music these days because i mean it seems like they're not finding it just on the radio i mean i love sitting down and talking with people that find it on iheart or spotify or 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 um apple it's just the, the way that people are finding music but the question is how do you take this ep and get it to where they are it's a really difficult challenge you know with um with the way that uh the entire industry has completely fractured and has become very insular and and everyone has their own playlists and everyone has their own um feed as it were and so people are really only finding what they already know and what they already like and i think um you know especially with streaming services uh to find things like this you know it's like a needle in a haystack so we really kind of depend on people like you who are championing our music and kind of getting it out to people and um you know we really appreciate what you do yeah the song the most wonderful time of year that had to have been a fun one to put together in that studio because i feel like you guys were just sitting there laughing and having a good time and then the engineer goes okay let's do it let's make this happen (laughs) <laughs> it was actually really fun you know it's i think uh when we shared the songs when we share the leads a lot of times like the lines that we sing are longer this is the one that we have where we're passing the ball 
more than any, any other song because it's such a playful song. And then especially the arrangement that we have where it's like this big band arrangement, it's just so playful. And and actually it, it really feels like, um, you know, we're live, uh, just a lively moment in the show. We've been putting it at the very end and it's just like so, it just hypes everyone up so much. It's so much fun. How do you choreograph a song like that when you're live on stage? Because I, I couldn't stand still. I, there's no way. And then you add the light show to it. Oh my God. <laughs> and a, it's all freestyle and a solo drum in there you know yeah. we've never had a solo drum i remember um with um our producer um carlos lopez i said you know we've never had a solo drum we should have one in one of those tracks and that was like that one was like perfect very well suited and he worked with someone else on this song and i was i was always looking forward and very excited to have a solo drum. Hopefully one day a guitar solo, but you know, slowly <laughs> we adding a little things that, there and there. Um, but you know, live, it's super fun actually to play and having, you know, our band on stage performing the song. It feels, um, and it's it, it's a, a song that we finished the show with. Wow. Um, it's very uplifting and I find the, the energy is wonderful. See, I'm that freak that would hear a song like that, sing right along with you, and then I wouldn't want to leave the the arena because I want to see them take down the stage. And and because I mean, it, to, me, to me, that's part of the experience. It's like, how did they even get up there? Who built this thing? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, but that's exactly what you want, right? That's how you want to end the concert, right? <laughs> I want to kick the stools. <laughs> <laughs> now, on a day like today, where you guys are uh, blessed with the opportunity to talk with people across the country, how are you protecting those voices? Because I've always learned that answering questions and communicating is very hard on those vocal cords. Well, I think that uh, generally talking is one of the most um, taxing things for the voice, but... Fortunately, we have microphones to assist and we have headphones on so we can kind of judge and keep track of our voice. It's different when you're just in the room and you're kind of just one on one. It's another thing to have, you know, your voice is basically right in your ear. So you can check if you've got right projection or if you're maybe speaking a little bit too much. The more breath you have across a tone, the more taxing it is. And, you know, we just we've been at this for 20 plus years and we kind of know our limits and we know you know if you're extra super tired and you know we have a camaraderie in the band that uh, you know if one guy's feeling tired the other guys will take over and kind of handle the majority of the questions and um you know, we just navigate it. We have to take every opportunity as it comes, and we can't be precious with ourselves. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a mic junkie in the way that that baby better be loud enough, and it better, and I better be able to feel something from it. And if it's too low, it's going to it's going to injure the vocal cords. So it's it's like I, if if you saw the volume that I have on my microphone now, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Well, yeah, that depends very much on the situation, obviously. Now, in this situation where we're just where it's early in the morning, we've done three shows in a row with travel the last three days. Uh, yeah, I better have a loud mic. But I mean, when we're on stage, you know, and you're as a trained opera singer, you know, we had environments where I remember last year we had an outdoor show somewhere in the States and we were, uh, you know, then you don't have any room reflecting or anything. We had it so quiet on stage. You could literally hear yourself acoustically wow. perfectly well. And that was absolutely wonderful to sing. Because that's kind of what you then, that takes you back to your roots as a classical singer, you know, where you would not sing with a microphone. And if you can do that, if you can afford that sonically, it's wonderful. Wow. Where can people go to find out about the tour? And most importantly, where can they get the EP? Well, they can find out about all the dates on ildevo.com. We are actually on tour until December 23rd. We'll be heading to Texas, Florida, more dates here around New York. Um, and as for the Christmas EP, you can find that on Dora, Spotify, Apple Music, any platforms out there. Um, and Brett, I'd like to add to this that we are um, releasing a um, new single. This must be confusing because we've put a lot of music out there right now. <laughs> a double X album, which celebrates our 20 years together as a band. And this is also Steven's first album with us, which I'm super proud of. And it's coming out on February 9th. There's already pre-order for this. And our second um, single is dropping on Friday. Our first single was crazy. And yeah, keep checking our music, guys. 
Wow. I, I can't thank you guys enough for sharing your gift with the world, because really, when, when it comes down to it, you are sharing it with the world. You have been in so many different countries, and we, we just so, we're just so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. We're thank grateful you. to you, too, you. for supporting thank us. Thank, thank you. you. Well, you guys be brilliant today, okay? We'll do our best. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Very nice chatting with you. <laughs>